I thank you, Lord, that it was you, God, that woke us up on this morning, God. It was you, God, that gave us this appointed day, God, this appointed time, God, to come together, Lord. And, Father, God, I pray right now, God, that you will forgive each of us on this morning, God, as we come into your presence, God, as we come seeking you on this morning, God, as we come pouring ourselves out to you, God. I thank you right now, God, that you are a forgiving God and that you are a caring and that you are a loving God. So, Father God, I pray right now, God, that you will just meet each and every person, God, every person that is gathered here, God, every person that is gathered at their home, God, every person, God, that is at their job, God, in their car, God, whatever, wherever they are on today, God, I pray right now, God, that you will just meet them there on today, God. Father God, I pray right now, God, that this will be a worship experience, God, that like they have never experienced before, God. I thank you, Lord, that your presence, God, is with us, God, no matter where we are on today, God. So, Father God, I thank you right Right now, God, for your Holy Spirit, God, and go from living rooms on today, God, and go from bedrooms on today, God. Father God, meeting at job sites on today, God, meeting in hospitals on today, God. I thank you right now, God, for your presence on today, God. And Father God, I thank you right now, God, that you have a word for your people on today, God, that is going to change their lives on today, God. I thank you, Lord, that we can cast our cares on you on today, God, because you care for us, God. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you know everything that concerns us, God. So Father God, I pray right now, God, that you will perfect everything, God, that concerns your people on today, God. I thank you right now, God, that you are building up, God, where the enemy is trying to tear down, God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you have us covered, God, when the enemy thinks that he has his foot in, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are there, God. So, Father God, have your way in this worship experience on today, God. Have your way in this service on today, God. Have your way in this word on today, God. And, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that we are going to decrease, God, and empty ourselves, God, so that you can increase, God, and fill us up even the more on today, God. And Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for who you are, God, and for what you're going to do on today. And Father God, I just say, have your way, God, and move, God, like you have never moved before. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We will now have scripture reading. Good morning, AGM. The scripture lesson today is going to come from Psalms 92, and we're reading its entirety. It's, a, it's good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. Proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy all what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. Since, since this people do not know, fools do not understand that though the wicked spring up like grass and all they would do is flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. For surely your enemies, Lord, Surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a seed of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's offering time. It's a time that we all can participate and be part of the worship experience. And when you give, you can go on the website, scroll down to the lower portion of the website, and click on the donate button, and you can be a blessing. Or you can mail it in to 1783 Pass Road, Biloxi, Mississippi, to Amazing Grace Ministries. Or you can reach out to the ministry to myself, Brother Quasi, Pastor, and we can get with you and pick up your offering. Just be a part of giving because, as, as, as I've heard said so many times, you can't be God giving no matter how hard you try because he gave his very best in his son, Jesus Christ, because Jesus gave his life, but Jesus died, and he rose with all power in his hand, but Jesus didn't want to leave us counselless or comfortless, so what he did when he ascended up into heaven, he gave us the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, so it's a giving a ministry, a giving heart, and a giving mindset as we give it as unto the Lord, so I encourage you just to be a part of this worship experience and give as unto the Lord, because you truly cannot be God giving no matter how hard you try. So all hearts and minds on Christ as we go before the Lord in the word of prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you and praise you for an opportunity, Lord God, to give back unto you just a portion of what you blessed us with. So Father, bless, Lord God, all the giving hearts, Lord God, all those that had a heart's desire to give. 
Father, we just place ourselves in your divine hands, that you would use these your tithes and offerings, Lord God, to build your kingdom, to meet the needs of your people, and to spread the gospel throughout the land. Yes. So we thank you, and we praise you, and we exalt you, Lord. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray, and we say amen and praise God. It's offering time. so good and he is so worthy to be praised. What a day, what a mighty God we serve. We're so grateful for his goodness and his yes, mercy. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes. Last time I checked, God is still good and he is so worthy oh, yeah. to yes. be praised. We give God glory. Amen. This is Brittany and Minister Jay and Raquasa and all our tech team. Amen. Making it happen so that we can do the best we can to give you Amen. The best that we have as we lift up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, what a wonderful day the Lord has made. How awesome it is to dwell, amen, in His presence. Uh, last time I checked, God is still good. Yes. Yes. He is so yes. worthy yes. to be praised. Yes. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody fool you. Uh, this is 
uh, a good day. Amen. Regardless of what you might be experiencing and what you're going through, I want you to know the God that we serve, he is still able to do more than you can even think or imagine. Amen. Um, the good news is, the good news is, um, whatever you are going through, just know God did not allow you to go through it to keep you there. All right. All Amen. Right. He, uh, the key word there is going through, yeah. meaning that if he brought you to it, He's going to take you through it. Right. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. And I'm not trying to rhyme or rap or say oh, something, but I would even tell you the truth. Yes, if he right. brought you to it, yeah. he is going to take you through it. Yes, you need to remind somebody of that and tell somebody, God, that we serve, uh -huh. he got us. He got us. You got to just tell people that through your house. Go ahead and share it. Amen. Go ahead and share it. Let people know that this is Sunday morning. This word of God for the people of God. Amen. Uh, go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it right now. Amen. I know that you was encouraged too earlier. Maybe you're still trying to get your breakfast out. Get, get, get your food ready for uh, Sunday dinner. You might have just waking up or whatever. But whatever you're doing right now, it's word time. Amen. So we want to make sure that we go ahead and, and do that. And do our part. Amen. Amen. You can be the uh, evangelizer this morning. You can. All you have to do is share. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is invite. All you have to right. do is tell somebody it's time. It's, it's time. time. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I tell you, I say that is because the word of God can change our lives. The word of God can make the difference. The word of God is doing it. Everything that it was sent out to do, it accomplished it. It do not return unto him void. So that's good. So All children right. still can be saved. Yeah. Spouses still can begin a relationship. Yeah. Co-workers still can be saved. Yes, Friendship still can be mended. Yeah. The love of Christ still can be shown. Yeah. But it's up to us to do our part. Yeah. And if we do our part, God will do his part. Yes, Amen. Amen. And I just want to let you know. And I want to slip something in there real quick. God is working while we're walking by faith. Yes, and if you yes, just sir. keep walking by faith, keep on showing the love of Christ, I want to tell you. God is still doing his part. Yeah. Yeah, he's working behind the scene. You might not see the immediate results. You might not see immediate change. You might not get immediate relief. But I, I want to guarantee you, and I just go ahead and tell you, God is still working it out. And if he's working it out, it's going to be all right. All right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I'm excited today for a lot of reasons. Amen. I'm excited. Very excited. I'm very optimistic. Amen. For what's to come. Amen. I believe the body of Christ has been going through some challenging moments, challenging uh, times in 2020. But I just believe that in the end, God is going to get the glory. The body is going to be edified. People will be saved and be stronger than ever before. Amen. And for that, that makes me so happy. That may, it excites me. Amen. That makes me want to keep on pushing. Amen. There's a word of God today for the people of God. There's something that we want to lift up, something we want to share. Amen. And, right, right. and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of been telewarring and, and um, I, I should say uh, very uh, skeptical, but also not, not reluctant, but I was sort of slow when in preaching uh, this. Been holding on to it for a while. Amen. Been pregnant with it. Labor pains been hitting me. But uh, I was like, God, I just want to do it at the right time. I really want to do it at the right time. All and right. confirmation came, and he said, now it's the time. Yeah. And, and, and so I, I want to make sure that uh, we, we, we do it, um, and we do it to, to, to bring him glory. Right. So this is the Sunday. Amen. I don't know where you're tuning in from. You got to put that in the comment section. Go ahead and comment. Where, you, where are you watching from? Amen. Now you got to just go ahead and comment on where you're watching from. Put that in the comment section. Let us know. Let us know. Because I tell you, God can reach you everywhere. Yes, sir. You know, I was talking to, uh, I guess, messaging with Chris Smith, Brother Smith, on the other day. And he, of course, him and his family is in Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, they are transitioning there as a PCS there. But it is so good to be able to still communicate with people that you have labored with. Uh, this is what we call our way to glory as a believer right. with. And so since we did that, I want right. you to know that we're so thankful and we give God glory, amen, for him allowing us to still communicate and still talk about what God is doing, All right. amen. Uh, if you have your Bible, uh, I want you to go with me, amen, to the wonderful, wonderful uh, gospel of Mark, I believe it is. All right, right. Amen, amen. Mark chapter number six. 
Mark chapter number six. And I want to read this for you here and, and we'll get out your way. Mark chapter number six. We're going to begin reading right there at verse number 45. I thank you for standing for the reading of God's word, knowing that God's word is sharp and any two edged sword. It has an effect on our life. Uh, it sort of whips us into shape, sort of rewards us and tells us we're on the right track. It corrects us, it rebukes us. The word of God is, I tell you, you can just read it. Uh, somebody can just read the word to me and I can just hear the word speaking right to my heart. Not only me, I know it affects you as well. But right there in chapter number six of the gospel according to Mark, verse number 45, you will find these words. It says, and it's the NIV version, amen, New International uh, Version. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to Bethesda. While he dismissed the crowd, after leaving them, he went up on the mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. That's two different places. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, uh, walking on the lake. He was about uh, to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out uh, because they saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and when the wind died down, they were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hard. So I want to read real quick a key verse, if I can. It says, they cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. All right. Amen, amen. Find you somebody real close, amen. Look over at him, find him real close, amen. Pull him to you. And say, hey, neighbor, hey, neighbor. Today, today, with the help of the Holy Spirit, the, the, Holy Spirit, the, preacher, the preacher is going to remind you, might inform you, Jesus was there all the time. Tell somebody else, Jesus was there all the time. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Father, we thank you. For this preaching moment, this teaching hour, God, we know that it's nothing too hard for you. We know that all things are still possible when it comes to you. We pray now in Jesus' name that you would just allow the minds, the hearts, be receptive of your word. Prepare that wonderful atmosphere where nothing will uh, take away, distract us from receiving a word from you yeah. this very morning. God, we know besides you there is no other. So we thank you for being the king of kings. In the Lord of Lords. Yes. Father, we pray now, God, for the, the, the homes, oh God, that need to hear from you this morning. We pray for the hearts that might be hardened this morning. We pray for the ones that might be mourning this morning, the ones that's hurting, the ones that need to be comforted. We pray for the ones, God, trying yes. to find their way. We yes. pray for the ones, oh God, that need to hear from you. God, let them receive nothing else but your word this morning. Yeah. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name that the ones that might be hurting, oh God, physically, God, allow that pain to ease and see, move right now in Jesus' yeah. name, oh God. Allow that pain to go. We speak life now. We speak healing now. We speak recovery now. Yeah. God, ease the pain where they can hear and receive yeah. your word this morning. Nothing to stop them. Nothing to hinder them. Yeah. But everything to bring you glory this morning. We thank you for your word. We give you praise for your word, God. We lift you up. We magnify you. You're bigger than our problem. You're bigger than the storm, God. You are the king. And we declare in this place, oh God, your word go forth yes. now. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Jesus was there yes. all the time. All right. Jesus was there all the time. You know, last time I checked, 
sometimes life hits us so hard to the point where we feel as though we are all alone. Mm -hmm. Even when we have people around us that we see every day, mm -hmm. but yet we feel all alone. Uh, people we text every day, people we Instagram with every day, people that we talk to every day, and we tell them what we had for lunch. We tell them uh, what's going on in the world. We comment about it. We, we talk about uh, uh, what's happening around us, but yet there are some things that's happening with us mm -hmm. that we feel like we are all alone. Uh, there's a storm brewing around us. There's a storm that we're in. We are in a, a physical storm. We are in a mental storm. We are in a spiritual storm. And then the good news is we feel all alone. Mm -hmm. The reason that's good news today for me is because there's some times that we feel all alone, but I want to remind you that's a good place for God to come in and do all what right. he do best. All right. Uh, it's good when he can isolate us or pull us apart away from the crowd mm -hmm. where he can spend some one-on-one -on -one time with us so, so to the point where I can remind you that Jesus was there all the time. Yeah, even when you are hurting, even when you are going through, even when you're trying to find your way, even when you're trying to get 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 through what you feel like you're the only one that you are bearing and going through. When you feel like you're the only one trying and nobody else is trying. When you feel like you're the only one putting in a hundred percent and everybody else is putting in thirty and fifteen and you know two percent. But I want to remind somebody that Jesus was that. All the time. What are you saying, Pastor David? Well, I'll go ahead and preach it real easy and quick. But he was he was there when your storm began. He was there uh, while you was in the storm. And, and he will be there when you come out of the storm. So I just want to remind somebody of Jesus. Now I could have told you that uh, uh, Tate Reeves was there all the time, but he can't do nothing but call a couple of cars to come pick you up and, and sign a few papers. You know, I could have told you that Mara Hughes was there, or Mara Fofo was there, but they really can't do nothing but make a phone call. I could have told you, you know, that President Trump was there, but, you know, they can't do, man can only do so much. All right, all right. But I want to remind somebody that when I say Jesus was there, yeah. uh, you, do you realize who he is? Do, do we need to call the, the role and remind you of who he is and what he can do? When you say Jesus was there, that's your all in all, somebody says. He is all you need. He's bread when you're hungry. Water when you're thirsty. He's strength when you get weak. He was there. Can I just say Jesus was there? Yeah. Uh, now let's let the scripture go ahead and preach this real quick. Amen for us. You better get it. Go ahead and you, you share it with somebody yet? Hey, amen. amen. WT, you sent this to somebody? Hey, yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead because somebody need to hear it. Yeah. In the midst of your storm, Jesus was there the whole time. All right. All right now let's see it right here in this wonderful chapter uh, 6 of Mark. Wonderful. Chapter 6 of Mark, you will see this. Chapter 6 of Mark, look at it right there. He says it like this. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat All right. and go ahead of them to Bethesda uh -huh. while he dismissed the crowd. All right. What's up? Jesus immediately made his disciples get into the boat to go Ahead of him uh -huh. to Bethesda. All right. Somebody once said that Jesus is always coming from where he's going. All right. Meaning that he is everywhere, mm -hmm. all at the same time. It's all right. Now I, I just believe that now uh, because I believe that before I get there, he's already there. It's all right. I believe that when I'm leaving where I'm at, he's watching me leave. That's just how I see Jesus. That's, that's how I see my Savior. That's how I see my other brother. That's how I see the Messiah. I, I, I know that he was there all the time in my situation, but I want to remind somebody or inform somebody that the Bible says immediately Jesus made his disciples go ahead of him uh -huh, to Bethesda. He, he told him, y'all get in the boat and go and go. And I'm going to stay here. But y'all go ahead and go. Now, now, and I, I just 
Now, this is bothering me that, Mr. Peters, because the Bible says that Jesus is the, you know, he's the author yes, and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Right. Meaning, or he, he's the one that uh, uh, sets up our route. Mm -hmm. He's the one that originated or started our faith. Yes. Uh, I understand what he said. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It, it lets me know that he's been for me. He, he, he's ahead of where I got to get to. He, in other words, he's setting my route. He's my G. Right. He is the one that know every step of my life when it comes to me living this. He already put in motion of what's going to happen in my life. I got to get to where he is at. He know about the storm that I'm going to experience. He know about the trouble that I'm going to go through. He know about the tears that I'm going to shed. Is there anybody here know that Jesus, he already know. The Bible declares, he told his disciples, y'all get in the boat and go ahead of me. Now, your first point, if you're right, the reason I know that Jesus was there all the time is because Jesus, now y'all gonna get, don't get too mad with it, but I gotta get these points and gone, you can go eat and burp and be, I'll be out your head. But here it is. Jesus will send you to the storm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. now, don't get mad with it because now, how can Jesus send me to it? How can Jesus put me in a storm? What kind of God will put you in a storm? Jesus, he knew that his disciples yes, yes. would be going into a storm. Uh -huh. He knew that his disciples would be afraid. Uh -huh. He knew that his disciples would be wondering why the wind blowing so hard. He knew that they would be struggling trying to oil the boat. He knew that they would have problems. Yes, yes, but he sent them to the storm. Yeah, somebody wondering today, why am I in what I'm in? Why am I going through what I'm going through? Why am I experiencing what I'm experiencing? Why we got to go through this COVID-19? Why do we have to go through this, this difficult political time? Why do we have to deal with civil unrest? Well, Jesus sent you to the storm. And somebody got to know that he is there all the time in the beginning of your storm. He sent you there. He sent you there. He sent you there. You say, well, pastor, it's hard in my home. Well, he sent you there. It's hard on the job. He sent you there. It's hard when I go down through Walmart. He knew you was going to be fighting over the buggy at Walmart. He sent you there. He, he knew that it was going to be hard in the doctor's office. He sent you there. He knew that you would have to go through chemo. He sent you there. He knew radiation would be difficult for you. But he sent you there. Yeah, somebody need to hear me today. The good news is, he was there all the time. He was there. He said, Pastor Davis, how do you know that he was there? Well, he was standing there with his disciples. Can you see, he counted all 12. He said, y'all go ahead. Get in the boat and go to Bethesda. I know it was bothering. I know it was messing with him. But he knew that it would be good for them to go ahead and experience this storm. Yeah. All right. Because he knew they would be battling <laughs> on the other side yeah. Yeah. of the storm. Yeah. And something else that he knew, he knew that I would be with them. Yeah. Yeah. Even while they're going through. Is it possible that he knew you would be better? on the other side of what you're dealing with. Is it possible that he knew that he would be with you while you're going through what you're going through? Right. Every now and then you ought to feel him pick you up. Every now and then you ought to feel him rock you to sleep. Every now and then you ought to feel him let you know everything's going to be all right. Every now and then you ought to feel the joy of the Lord in the midst of your storm. The Bible says after leaving them, he went up to the mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he, this Jesus, right. he was alone on land. Mm. And when we read this earlier, we sort of, sort of wanted to throw the hint out there. Jesus was all alone. Somebody say alone. alone. Uh, you ought to comment alone. He was alone on land because some people think we got to have Jesus in our pocket. Mm. 
Some people think that we got to have Jesus. If we ain't got our Bible, then we ain't got Jesus. We feel like if we ain't at church, we don't have Jesus. If we not in the building, we ain't got it. If pastor ain't close, I can't get no prayer through. But I want somebody to know today, Jesus was on land alone. But the disciples, the Bible says, yeah, y'all with me? He saw, he saw, he saw the disciples straining at the oars. Y'all see it? He saw them on land, but he saw them on the water. Somebody missed their shout. He, he was on land, a different location, but he saw the disciples on the sea of Galilee. He was there. They, they were there straining with the oars. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do this one more time. Right, come on. Maybe this just for Quasi. He was on the land, but he saw the 12 disciples in the struggle of their storm. He was on land, praying, but he saw them in the middle of their mess. You feel about it, but he's sitting high right now, right beside the Father, and you are experiencing your storm. But he sees you right in the middle of what you're going through. Is that good news? I guess all I'm trying to say, regardless of where we think Jesus is at, regardless of how busy we think he is, he still can see us. While we are going through, yes, while we are straining with the cares of life, yes, while we are straining trying to pay our bills, yes, yes, while we are straining with them jokers on our job, yes, while we are straining yes, with people that don't want to wear their masks, yes, while we're straining trying to put food on our table, yes, while we're straining with cancer, while we're straining with diabetes, yes, while we're straining with blood pressure, yes, don't you know that he looking down on us. The Bible says that he saw them. Is that right? So I want to tell you the first thing that we saw is let us know that he was there. He will send you into your storm. But your second point is Jesus can see you in the storm. Uh -huh. You know, because you got some haters. They be trying to look at you in the storm real Oh, yeah, she looking bad now. It look like it's a hair falling out. Boy. I mean, look at it, man. He losing weight. Boy, he, I don't know what. Woo, he looking worse, Harris. Mm. Oh, yeah. He used to wash his truck, but now he don't. Mother. He don't wash his truck. Mm. Oh, no, nah. did he lose it? Did they lay him off, girl? Mm. Oh, see, people want to see you in your storm. Yeah. 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 That boy done dropped out of college, and ever since he dropped out of college, she been going down. She, yeah. The girl, she don't even, she used to wear braids, but now she just let it go. I, I, just going Woo. down. Damn. Haters find all the negative of your storm. Yeah. But I want to tell somebody, is somebody else that see you yeah. in the middle of your storm. He, yeah. he can see you yeah. in your storm. Yeah, oh, look at the boys just taking them down. Now, the boys don't just so destroy them. They, they, he, he, she won't come back from this. He won't come back from that. Oh, I told you, I knew it. Ever since that abortion, I knew. Look, I'm telling you that. Oh, she been in the hospital. The doctor, you know more about they storm than they do. But I'm glad that Jesus will see you in your storm. Yeah, the disciples, if they were here today, they would tell you, he can see you while you're struggling. He can see you while you're straining. He can see you while you're trying to press your way. The Bible says, uh, because the wind was against them. See, don't think all your storms going to be a kumata. No worries. Don't think all your storms going to be quick and come in like Zeta and be gone real quick. Some of your storms, you will have to strain. Some of your storms, you will have to struggle because the wind will be against you. In other words, it will be some opposition. Now, how we got to win this? Yeah, 
So don't fear, don't be uh, no way tired when opposition hits you. Don't get beside yourself when opposition hits you. Can I just go ahead and be bold and say, expect opposition. Yeah, the wind was against them. But the good news is Jesus could see them. I want somebody to know, you ought to just say he can see me. You ought to say he can see me. You might have tears running down your face right now because the word is hidden right at home. But you ought to just do your tears. Come in. He can see me. He, he can see me. And if he can see you, that means that he must be able to feel everything you're going through. Yeah, if he can see you, he must be able to, 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 to know how you feel. If he see your tears, he, he see you counting your money, he see you feeling all alone, he see your anxiety, he can see you. Yes. And if he can see you, the good news is, the Bible says, shortly before dawn, uh -huh. he went out to them. Now this is not a point, but it, it was good to me. Mm -hmm. Walking on the lake. Oh, all right. This one here for free. I'm going to go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible says shortly before dawn, uh -huh. he went out to them. All right. Now this one here, Jesus can see you in your storm. Mm -hmm. He will send you to the storm. But then, I, this, this here, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't get this text, but you can write this down. Or you can comment in the comment section. He'll come to you in your storm. All right, all right. Isn't that good? Yes, sir. See, because some folks run away from you in your storm. You, you try to text them jokes, they won't even text you back. All you needed was $182. And you don't text them, and they won't even text you back. You know, on Instagram, they want to even tell you about you in Facebook message, you want to, and then you call them, they just, uh, in your storm, when you need them the most, everybody won't come to you, but I got somebody. Can I suggest him? Mary's baby, he'll come to you. I tell you, the provider will come to you. He, he made you well, will show up. The Bible said he came. Is that right? Now, when it was done, he went out to them. And look, see, some folk, think that Jesus had to do everything the way man do it. Because if somebody out there in the middle, when we have problems out here in the city of Biloxi, out in the sound, Biloxi Sound, or the Mississippi Sound right here in, in the water out here, when a boat starts sinking or somebody is drowning, we, the first thing we do as a fire department, we get the fire boat. Because we got to meet them with a boat to get it. Because we can't just, you know, do something crazy. Right. Jason Earl is not going to go and try it. To walk on the water. All right. Like what Jesus did. You, you understand? You understand? I'm going to say, hey, get the boat. Yeah, yeah. You're a preacher that you believe. Get the boat. <laughs> See, because somebody needs to know yeah. that I got somebody looking over me in my storm. Yeah. And I can't expect him to do everything that man do. But he'll step out of the norm. Yeah. And he'll work a miracle. The Bible says that he came to them. Yeah. And I know y'all still looking for what kind of boat Jesus come on. Did he come on a blazer bay? When did he come in? What kind of boat was it? Well, he came on whatever size sandals he was wearing. He stepped on the water. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell somebody this gun. This, I'm, I'm trying to get it out. But sometimes when Jesus sees you in the struggle, and he don't do stuff the way you think. Sometimes he don't have time to do it the way man do it. He'll just was about to pass them 
But when they saw him Come on, sir. Mm. walking on the lake, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they thought he was a ghost. Uh -huh. Is it possible, Sister Alicia, that we miss God sometimes? Mm. Because it don't look like we think it should look. Come on now. Mm. It's too good to be true. Yeah. Come on, sir. Come on. He is coming to see about us. Yeah, yeah. And we expecting him to come in a boat. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. On a jet ski. Come on now. On a cruise ship. Come on now. On a lifeboat. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when he comes. Showing that he got power yes, sir. Yes, sir. over everything. Yes, sir. Walking on the water. Uh -huh. We don't think it's Jesus. Come on now. But we think it's a ghost. Yeah. Can, right. can, can we just get in the mind of the disciples real quick? Yeah. They are so terrified uh -huh. to the point they calling on Jesus, looking at Jesus, uh -huh. but still don't know. <laughs> It's Jesus. Right. Can y'all see that? Mm. You know, we still say, Lord, bless me. Mm. Lord, deliver me. Mm. Make my family whole. Mm. And then he started working miracles in our life. All right. And we said, this is too good to be true. All right. I don't know. I pray and some, some, I don't know what it is. Might be God. <laughs> might be new job. But she is so much better. Might be the new school. Can we just give credit yes, sir. Yes, sir. to where credit is due? Yeah. And just go ahead and say it's Jesus. <laughs> Our disciples, they looking at him and they said, uh, it's a ghost. I, I mean, we left him on land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a ghost. And, and I wish I was there. I could say, well, what do he look like? I, no, I probably didn't write with him. Up under the boat. But 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 I, I want you to know All right. that they said it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. And they cried out because they saw him. Yeah. Not just one, but everybody saw him. Mm -hmm. And they were all terrified. Yeah. Now this is good. He was there all the time. Jesus was there. Can we agree? All right. He will send you to your storm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He will see you in your storm. But then, look what happened. They were scared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why, uh, Sister Tia, I just don't believe God wants us to be running around here scared. That's right. Because he had not given us the spirit of fear. Come on. But he's given us power, yes, sir. Yes, sir. love, yeah. and a sound mind. Right. That's the kind of spirit we're supposed to have. Yeah. Yeah. How I got a witness? Uh -huh. He don't want us to run around here being scared. He don't want you to be in your house scared. He don't want you to be scared to go to Walmart. He don't want you to be scared to go to your job. He don't want you to be scared just because somebody walk in looking like they're going to do something. He don't want us to be scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what he do want us to do on, is know that he's there yeah. all the time. All right. He can see you. He will send you. Yeah. But last and not least, and I'm going to get out your way. On, last and not least, the Bible declares when he saw them terrified, Immediately. That's what the NIV says. He spoke to them. All right. Yeah, that's why I'm glad. Jesus is on the main line. You can tell him what you want. Yeah, you, his line is never busy. You can call him up and tell him what you want. Yeah. The Bible says that immediately he spoke to them. Uh, they cried out mm -hmm. because they saw him yeah. and they were terrified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They cried out, but he spoke to them. Yeah. They cried out, yeah. Yeah, but he spoke to them. Yeah. Sometimes we just holler and moan and groan, mm -hmm. but he'll speak to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is that good news? Yes, sir. Yeah. He spoke to them and he said, and it's an exclamation mark, so I'm going to try to do it the best way I can. Uh -huh. He said, Now that say see somebody yeah, yeah. That, that, that now the right then that that, that would have did something. Mm -hmm. Right then 
that should have changed today. Take courage. In other words, don't be scared. Uh, take care. Be strong right now. Uh, I, I, I need you to uh, uh, warm it up. I need you to man up. I, I need you to be strong. And the reason is because it's me. <laughs> yeah. See, don't be strong in yourself. You out there crying. Don't be strong because you, you can't do it, but you got to know you need to be strong because it's Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's me. I, I, I was there all the time. I, I, I sent you here. I, I saw you while you was here. And now I need you to be strong. <laughs> yes, because I'm still here. The Bible says, he said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Uh huh. Now that's good to me. Come on now. He said, "Now, now, because your last point, and I, I'm trying to trying to close, so I don't go because I know you got to go eat. But look, he he says, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Uh -huh. yeah. Then he climbed into the boat yeah. with them, uh -huh. and the wind died down. All right. So your last point is Jesus was there all the time. Mm -hmm. He will." Send you to your storm. All right. He will see you in your storm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, last and not least, he will save you from your storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I know somebody said, "Who, girl? He wants you to go through. You just stay in it. He wants you to go through. Mm -hmm. He wants you to go through. He he wants you to go through. He needs you to go through. He right. he he gotta have you to go through. But I want you to know." That he'll save you from your storm. Yeah, yeah. See, the disciples was out there crying. They was out there bowing. They was out there struggling. But then the Bible says, this is it. Mm -hmm. He climbed into the boat. All right. All right. And when he got into the boat, yeah. the storm ceased. All right. The wind died down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. He'll save you from your storm. Got a little story. Mm -hmm. AGM family, y'all have heard it, but I want to do it again. But it's, it's, it's one that, that sort of sums this up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and let, let the minister come and, and get ready and do that thing. But it was a grandfather. He went to visit his daughter. Uh -huh. And his daughter had a child. And the child was probably about, uh, I'd say, eight, nine months, the baby was dealing with the anxiety of not being able to feel her mom. And she would start crying every time the mom or the father laid the child down. And as that baby was crying, the grandfather said, I just can't stand the baby crying. And she said, Daddy, don't come here starting that. She said, Daddy, I need you to be strong because we're trying to teach her how to be able to lay in her crib by herself. We, 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 we done brought in here, and when we come in the living room, we put her in the playpen. And we want her to stay, learn how to take her naps and lay there. And when she started crying, my husband, we all have decided we're not going to pick her up. So, Dad, don't come here changing anything. He said, but I'm her grandfather. He said, Dad. She said, Daddy, do not take her out of that playpen. And that baby would cry, Wah! And the grandfather go over there and look at her. She just red and she said, he's crying. And then all of a sudden, the grandfather looked back for his daughter. And she's in the kitchen. And as she's in the kitchen, uh, the grandfather looked at the baby. The baby went there. So the grandfather go there and pick up the baby. And the daughter come out and said, Daddy, I told you, don't pick her up. Put her back down. And now he put her down with tears in his eyes. And the baby, as soon as he the baby get down into the playpen again, she starts, and the mother go back into the kitchen and she starts, and the grandfather look at the mother, and that baby over there, and then he looked back at the baby, and he could see that it was a storm brewing in that playpen with that baby. That baby storm was, I, I want somebody to be close to me. I, I, the baby apparently felt terrified. The baby was hurting because she was out of the sense of normalcy to the point where the baby felt all alone. And now, all of a sudden, the baby stopped crying. 
and the mother come out of the kitchen. And the mother come out of the kitchen and she's looking for her daddy. And then she make her way over to the playpen. And she look in the playpen and the grandfather is over inside the playpen All right. with the baby. Yes, sir. I just want to let somebody know, even though you feel like you're alone, mm -hmm. even though it seems like nobody can get to you, even though you want God to pull you out of the storm, God is a God that says, you know what? If I don't deliver you from the storm, I'll get in the boat with you. Yes, I will climb right over into that playpen. Yes. Whatever I can do yes. to calm you down yes. and to remind you that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right. Whatever I need to do to grow you up and get you yes. strong enough where you can be by yourself, I want you to know I will be there yes. all the time. Yes, I want to tell you, he'll, he can, he'll send you to your storm. All right. He'll see you while you're in your storm. But last and not least, he'll save you yes, from your storm. Yeah. God bless you. Just know Jesus was there all the time. All right. God bless you. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Can somebody just say, can't nobody do me like can't Jesus? Nobody. nobody. Because Jesus will send you somewhere, yes, and when he sends you there, he's going to take care of you while you're there. Right. He sees you while you're there, and not only that, he will save you while you were there. So whatever it is that we're going through on today, whatever it is that we can't see Jesus, let us adjust our vision on today so we can see Jesus for who he truly is. Mm -hmm. And as we see him, let us know that while we are in that storm that we're going through, Jesus sees us in that storm. And while he was there, he's going to take care of us. He's going to provide everything that we need in that storm. And when we're finished, we know that we're going to be better. He's going to save us so that we can go forth and share our testimony yes. and snatch yes. somebody else yes. out of that same situation. Right. Because we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. So on today, we can be safe in that storm while we're going through that storm. We All can right. remember that God is with us because he sent us there. And when God sends us to something, he's going to take care of us while we're in it. Mm -hmm. So on today, I need you to be encouraged on today that while we're in that storm, that God is with us. And if you don't know Jesus in your storm, today is a perfect day yes, for you to come to him naked as you are on today right. and give him your storm on today so that you can come out better than you were before. And trust and believe that while you're in your storm, God has you and he's going to save you so that you, even before you didn't know him, before you came into that storm, and while you're in that storm, you get to know him and come better so you can go out and get your friends and yeah. tell them who Jesus is. Yeah. And you just have a whole Holy Ghost party and the party just keeps on going. Yeah. So on today, yeah. I want to invite you to, to just invite Jesus into your heart. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior on today, I want to invite you to do that on today. All and right. if you have uh, are just have come away while you're in your storm, you've forgotten who he was, and you want to come back to him right. on today. You want to rededicate your life on today. I want to invite you to do that. You can do that, and you can come on today and join us virtually if that's what you feel. If you need a church family, Amazing Grace uh, is available to you on, virtually on today. Right. So I want to invite you on today. I want you to invite Jesus into your heart. I want you to really reflect on the things that you have going on on today, and remember that Jesus was there all the time. Yeah. And you can depend on him. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word on today, God. Amen. We thank you for your promises, oh God. We thank you that your promises are yea and amen. Yeah. And so, Father God, on today, God, as we stand on your promises on today, Father God, remembering that you are with us in our storm, that you sent us to the storm, you see us in our storm, and you will save us in the midst of our storm and from our storm. So on today, Father God, as we give you that storm on today, Lord yes. God, we cast all our cares upon you, Father God, and we thank you, Lord God, that you are with us, oh God. I pray right now, Father God, for each and every person that is going through their storm on today, Lord God, that they will lean not to their own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, and you will direct their path, oh God. Yes. Father God, I lift up each and every person right now, Father God, that wants to give their heart to you right now, oh God. Wherever they are, oh God, I'm praying, Father God, that they will pray the prayer of salvation on today, oh God, asking you in
into their hearts, oh God, confessing their sins on today, oh God, and allowing you, oh God, to cleanse them, oh God, and they will believe with their heart and their mind, oh God, and confess with their mouth that you are Lord of their life on yes. today, Father God, and that you have forgiven them for their sins, oh God, and that they will come to you, oh God, into the family of believers on today, Father God. I pray right now, Father God, that you are cleaning up that believer right now, oh God, to bring their hearts back to you, oh God, as they cry out in their homes, oh God, in the midst of their storm, oh God. I thank you right now, Father God, for purging their hearts and bringing them back to you on today, Father God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your promises. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace, oh God. I thank you that even now, God, you are just in our vision to see you for who you are, oh God, while we are in the midst of our storm, oh God, and remembering, oh God, that you are never leaving us nor forsaking us. You are there with us at all times, oh God. So I thank you, Father God, for always being a man of your word, oh God, being faithful to perform your word, oh God. So I thank you on today for what you're getting ready to do in the lives of the believers on today, oh God. I thank you for the life, for the shift that is changing in the atmosphere in the homes of your people because they remember that you are with them, oh God. I thank you and we give you glory and we give you honor and we bless your holy name on today. And it is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a word. What a word. What a word we received on today. What a word we received on today. And it's awesome that we can know in the midst of it all, in spite of it all, in regardless to it all, Jesus was always there. It's good for us to know that Jesus was there all the time. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged on today, and I encourage you that you know that he's there for you. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that God is there for you, good, bad, and different. And hold on to his unchanging hand. And we thank and praise God for your continued support. We thank and praise God for your continued prayers. And we thank and praise God for being part of this worship experience. But I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged on today to know that Jesus was there all the time. All right. That's good to know yeah. that he sends us. If anybody's going to send you there, I'd rather it be the Lord yeah, to send you. All right. And if anybody's going to see me through it, I would love to and know that the Lord is the one that's right. going to see me. And if someone's going to save me, you want someone that's able to save you from the very storm that you're in. Yeah. And it's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged on today. Yeah. We thank and praise God for you. We thank and praise God for your continued support and prayers. Be encouraged in the Lord. We get ready to close, but I want you to be encouraged because I'm encouraged on today to know that he was there all the time. All right. Be encouraged in the Lord and the power of his might. All hearts and minds on the Lord. Father, we just thank you and praise you. We glorify you, Father. And it's encouraging to know that you were there all the time. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for how you send us. We thank you, Father God, for how you see us. We thank you, surely, Lord, for how you save us. So, Father, we say now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that you pray. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged. Go in peace. And God bless you. Again, it's Pastor Davis coming right back at you. I hope all is well. I just want to say thank you so much for uh, doing your part, getting out to vote. Um, it was really uh, impactful you can see the change that's taking place. And I believe they had the highest numbers uh, in history. So we are so grateful that you got out and did your part, uh, that you can see it. And so you should be uh, grateful and also thankful. And you should be full of joy because when you do something, it, it makes a difference. Also, I want to say thank you to all our veterans, all our veterans that have been around um, in the military and now out of the military, the ones that are deployed and are active right now. I want to say thank you. We here at AGM, we love all of you. We thank you for your commitment, your service, and your sacrifice. And I want to also make it very clear to all of you, as we stop and pause on Wednesday, think about the blessing it is to live in a place where you have, I would say, the best military era ever. So with that being said, thank you for getting out and doing your part to vote. Uh, also, thank you to our veterans. And with all that in mind, let's keep in prayer all of our elected leaders and keep in prayer all of our military, the ones that's active, retired, uh, 
keep them lifted up, mainly the ones that are deployed. We thank you. We give God glory. I can't say thank you enough. What a word. We thank God. Remember, Jesus is there all the time. He was with you while you was voting. He's with you while you deployed. He's with you while you have gave a commitment and a sacrifice of your time, and now you're retired. Isn't it good that you can testify? He's been with me. He's been keeping me alive. God bless you. We love you from AGMM. But uh, yeah. good afternoon again. Pastor David's coming right back at you. AGM family, you know how to really make me proud. I tell you, I'm so excited about yet what happened on yesterday and also what happened on Tuesday. If you remember, we had talked about it. Uh, do your part. And you all went out and did your part. I tell you, you should be excited. You should be happy. You should be grateful and thankful. It's amazing what happens when you do your part. You made an impact. I tell you, the numbers was the biggest they ever been. I believe that it was the largest number for a presidential election that we ever had. You know what that means? So many people got out and did their part. And for that, I say thank you. I also want to say thank you to all of our military personnel, our veterans. We want to say thank you so much for serving right now and for the ones that are retired. And most of all, for the ones that are deployed. I want to say to Misha Frazier, we thank you so much for making it back safely. I'm glad that you're back, and I know Johnny is happy. So I want to say thank you for your service and making it back. And for our other members that are deployed, I want to say thank you. We're praying for you. Wednesday is your day. We recognize you. We salute you. We say thank you for all your sacrifices and everything that you have done away from your family and with your family. We can't say thank you enough. Thank you for getting out, doing your part, and thank you for serving in the military. We love our veterans here at Amazing Grace. We give God glory for you. Isn't it amazing? Jesus is with us all the time. He was with us when you were in the military. He's with you now when you retire. He's with you when you are stationed here at your base locally, and he's with you when you're deployed, even all across the world. So I'm glad that he was there all the time. Remember that he will lead you in your storm. He will see you while you're in your storm. And most of all, he'll save you from your storm. God bless you. We love you. Have a great, great Sunday evening. Until next time, we'll see you soon. God bless you.